Edge 50 Fusion has sold like crazy. But my problem is with exchange discount. Last week, they dropped a bomb with 20 laptops. Gaming laptops? Tata bye bye. ChatGPT 4 uh, would be the shittiest, dumbest, shittiest GPT you will use, you know. They should acquire nothing. And you imagine how cheated will he feel? I think in, in Pixel 10 launch event, Sundar Pichai will say, is it too late to say sorry now? Welcome back to the show, guys. Obviously, I don't have to give an introduction, Sajid and Arun. <laughs> All right, this camera. Hai. Chalo, let's 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 start. Uh, I think the first topic was uh, under thirty thousand. Man, twenty twenty four is a year where you know. I remember the time uh, two thousand nineteen, two thousand twenty, when you say, "Wow, when phone uh, used to launch." Last week was such yeah. that. You know, every phone came in and in unboxing and said, wow, man, for this price, you're getting this much phone. Right. And it's just not one. It's not one phone or an exception. Uh, literally, a lot of brands are launching great value for money smartphones, especially in that 25 to 30,000 yeah. price range. I mean, imagine Poco F6 8S Gen 3, you're getting at 26, 25, 26,000. Again, uh, that's <laughs> like introductory <laughs> offer where we are going to talk about that. But yeah. I, I have to say that uh, there is little reason for normal average consumer to buy an expensive phone. If they have 25, 30,000, right. they can buy great phones. Yeah, now. I mean, this is something Sajid keeps telling me that no need to spend so much on phones anymore. So, uh, for a quick reference, when uh, iQoo 12 launched in December last year, we said that it's a flagship killer. Right. I think India is a market where we keep redefining the flagship killer. So true. Yeah. And Poco F6 and even uh, Realme GT uh, 60 for that matter, they have redefined the under 30k market. I, think. I remember Arun telling me something about maybe this pricing uh, you know, situation in India is also brands trying to one-up each other because they might be losing market share. Yeah. Something's happening over there. Yeah, and uh, market share suddenly, uh, you know, for a few brands, it's it's like going up like crazy. And Poco beating OnePlus is something I never expected. Yeah, yeah, Poco beating OnePlus. Motorola growing by 110%. Crazy growth. Um, and Fun fact over there, and mm -hmm. I mentioned this in the video that I made as well. 110% growth and the H50 Pro hadn't launched yet. Launched then. yet. And Edge, you know, from what I have known from the sources, Edge 50 Fusion has sold like crazy. Okay, wait, you didn't tell us this. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. Nice. So, yeah, this is the first time I'm telling you. But, uh, yeah, uh, Motorola is one brand doing very well. And Poco, again, you know, the, what they are doing is, it's it's a simple strategy. India may value for money hoga, that will work. Right. Period. Realme, Xiaomi started, you know, that is what they yes, did. Yeah. And they went away from that core DNA of theirs. Uh, and now Poco and uh, Motorola are filling it. And they're doing it very, very well. And we have not even spoken about Infinix. They are also launching some great and Infinix phones. Infinix is there in the top 10. Yeah, they are also in the top 10. So, wow. Techno, Techno Infinix. Is, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough for uh, uh, Vivo and and Xiaomi and Oppo and not tough but you know they have to uh, also talking launch some Oppo what's happening there I don't know I really don't know and I've, I've been talking to a few people and I'm saying yeah Oppo ke phones kidhar hai yeah. you know, I, I think Oppo is somewhere you know they, they need to push themselves that's what I think because yeah. uh, they're going uh, that mind share is going what off. happened with the Find X7 Ultra you guys like you know, oh I love the, the phone by the way yeah it's I a mean, fantastic phone but yeah. they're not launching it in India I mean what is what is the play there like they're trying to showcase that you know this is what the Find series can do to the Indian audiences so they're prepping them for what's coming next or something of that sort yeah probably uh, that's what I think that Find X7 Ultra uh, they are not going to launch but uh, next series in Find or some premium series they are going to launch in India because that's what it was a showcase. X7 right. Ultra was a showcase product for them. Fantastic phone though. Yeah, lovely. What cameras? Right. Now, talking about net effective pricing and this mm. is something that's been a little bit of a personal pet peeve of mine because see, when phones used to launch earlier, we used to go to launch events and there'll be like a dadam, this is the price types and there'll be one price. Mm. Now there's dadam, there's an asterisk after that and they're like, <laughs> What is this? Like, I mean, what what's happening there? And then you know that there are some cashbacks and discounts that have become very popular thanks to e-commerce, uh, you know, platforms offering that with bank discounts and everything. But my problem is with exchange discount. Yeah, including that and showing the net effective yes. price. I'm okay with brands saying, okay, fine, you'll get a discounted price at launch if you use this card. Okay, fine. We'll figure the way out to get the loan. But everybody doesn't have a phone to exchange, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the... Yeah. So, your take, Sajid, on this? Especially... Uh, 
I don't think exchange works really well in India because in exchange we don't really exchange phones because बड़े भाई का फोन छोटा भाई ले लेता है दैट इज करेक्ट दैट इज अ गुड पॉइंट एज वेल पीपल डू होल्ड ऑन टू देर फोन या अनदर थिंग दैट आई रियली वॉन्ट टू हाईलाइट हियर and uh, that's how things have changed and why it is important that net effective price because that first sale and second sale has become extremely, extremely important, important because 80 to 85% of the uh, brand's inventory get sold there pehle kaise hota tha launch and then over a period of 3 months 4 months 5 months you know they used to sell now with so many launches happening they really don't know which new phone is going to come and beat them so what they want to do is do whatever it takes and their first sale should be big big banger right that's what they're doing and that's why you know coming up with all these marketing tactics net effective price 30000 is the price but you're getting at 2499 where you have 1000 rupees discount 2000 on bank credit card and 2000 extra exchange on top of that that's how they come up with 5 6000 discount and then give you the price you so, know what this makes me wonder is that somebody should have taught us how to do finance properly in school because right now it's getting really complicated yeah. to get i go to the flipkart website now like I, it's been ages since i purchased anything from flipkart honestly i think 20 2014 i can't remember 2014 or 15 was when i picked up something last but you go to that website you open the page <laughs> product page and the list of things that you can get exchange prices for oh my god i i learn uh, two three bank names every time i visit <laughs> flipkart <laughs> Yeah so uh, it's becoming not just complex it's convoluted if you ask me it's yeah. just extremely I, i mean but as a consumer you have to stay with your wides you know eyes wide open before you buy a you know you product. also have to understand brand's perspective see if one does it the other has to do it otherwise yes. they are going yes. to fall behind so uh, collectively for them also to be in business and it now it has become such cutthroat that uh, they go all the way and uh, do this and that's fine i think uh, indian consumers are also extremely intelligent that is they, so they true. understand all that from the comments we read uh, mm-hmm. from our viewers and uh, they are also very intelligent so i am okay with it what i am very happy about that now you are getting great phones at great prices i think that is that is a bottom line and i'm happy phones obviously great uh, we'll come back to phones there are a lot of things to talk about phones but i really do want to talk about snapdragon x elite and uh, <laughs> we actually obviously we are waiting for a device or a laptop to come to us which has snapdragon x elite we can't wait to test it out but sajid i'm sure you have a lot of thoughts on it so uh, we went to hawaii for the Qualcomm event and first time we we did not expect it we were like ki ha 8 gen 3 launch ho raha hai and uh, and yeah. and also uh, x elite launch was unexpected completely unexpected that is something that qualcomm did right and uh, even though they have launched we we were like ki uh, it's okay it's very similar to 8cx or so- something like their laptop or yeah. their tablet chipset but last week they dropped a bomb with 20 laptops Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, and and all the legacy brands are there, like being it HP, Lenovo, Samsung. Yeah, I have a question for you. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's not that first. It's the first time that uh, Qualcomm is launching a laptop chipset. But this is the first time that all the brands have lapped it up like crazy. Right. What, according to you, is the different with X Elite and previous? They also had those previous chipsets, and hardly one or two brands. The, the, the only difference is that the engineers who were Uh, you know instrumental in architecting the apple m series chip uh, here yeah that is the most important thing right so that's i remember this distinctly reminds me of uh, when uh, nokia pure views uh, uh, you know engineers had moved to huawei if i'm not mistaken to yeah. make their phones mm. uh, cameras basically mm. so it's that it's talent it's basically talent that is driving innovation honestly and when talent moves away we know what happens apple <coughs> johnny ivy but <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that um Yeah so essentially i think uh, the right talent at qualcomm right now and do you think um, sajid you can One answer this I, i have a question and sajid uh, you can chip in here do you think uh, this for laptops arm based chipsets is the future or do you think you know we are just seeing a churn and okay very interesting question even for the viewers i'll say because uh, x86 is uh, for raw performance right, yeah. and arm chipsets is something that is the future for if you want a portable machine portable okay. machine that is thin light and better battery life right okay 
if again we have seen this trend if apple is doing something then every other band, brand has to uh, you know follow that and again uh, as as we can see with excel it every brand also has jumped for this arm bandwagon mm-hmm. so i call this arm wrestling actually <laughs> <laughs> okay so definitely arm uh, chipsets are the future for if you need a ultra book if you need a performance on the go so i'm really happy that all brands have uh, you know accepted uh, this chipset and again this is not the uh, performance chipset uh, out and out because apple has made a panic launch event with ipad yeah to you know uh, make all the benchmarks obsolete uh, uh, we are the you know hamara m4 <laughs> yeah, we are still in and the m4 is really powerful definitely it's, it's but uh, do you think excelite is actually powerful than uh, m3 that's what they said right m3 uh, yeah it's uh, actually powerful than the m3 is what they're saying but we have to test if it's powerful than the m4 uh, what about x86 uh, wo wo log aayenge fir se wapas uh, i mean yeah. intel intel <laughs> intel yeah so uh, as we can see like there are uh, ultra books and there are gaming laptops i yeah. think the gaming laptops will still go for x86 because uh, uh, p- because of the performance mm-hmm. and uh, apart from this is where i beg to differ completely like i okay. have a completely contrary view on this uh-huh. every single laptop that is made in the future tomorrow uh-huh. in the future basically uh-huh. will be arm based has to be arm based intel has to get on that bandwagon as well it mm-hmm. is important for them to do that the main reason why i say this is because portable handheld gaming is becoming big so for me if i want and i've been gaming a lot so i'm getting a lot of perspective on that mm. i picked up a switch recently and you mm-hmm. know that gives me an idea of why i am doing portable gaming because mm. it's actually for somebody like me who loves playing games but cannot sit in front of a tv all the time because mm. somebody else wants to watch it at home portable gaming works for me so but i cannot possibly we have some alienware machine at office i can't possibly carry that by mm. everywhere so my point of view is that laptop will not gaming laptops i'm saying something really really like you know out there and people might like literally i contrary and people might just you know raise me in the comments but i feel that gaming laptops tata bye bye bolne ka time all right <laughs> There we go. So, gaming laptops does not have future, according to Irshad. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay. okay. So, moving on from XLE to AI. This is a topic that you are very, very yeah. into, Yarun. Yeah, yeah. So, your th- I there are two things that happened recently. I mean, basically, ChatGPT four o mm. incredible demo. Mm. I was blown away by what's uh, what's happening, mm. and Google AI, the mm. the competition, the biggest competition that ChatGPT has, or or is it? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the point is there are some really funny things happening with Google AI. But you've been using ChatGPT four four o. What do you think about it? Fabulous and. You know what? I'm more excited about what is going to come because I was uh, seeing uh, Sam Altman's interview right. where he said GPT-4, ChatGPT-4, uh, would be the shittiest, yeah. dumbest, shittiest GPT you will use. You know, I, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Seriously, he said that's the dumbest thing that you will use, and I was like, if that is dumb. means what is imagine it? <laughs> what is, and then for all uh, launched and uh, wow i mean is it I actually have, working is it natural language processing is it that good it's 90% the natural language processing because that ums and ahs and naturally modulating the voice they have done it beautifully well and uh, here i have to say that google in my view right now is falling behind like crazy they are not yeah. able to get the basics also right? right so you know the llms that they have and the intelligence that they are uh, you Running. know having in their gemini is not enough i, I don't know whether uh, how they are doing it whether the engineers are not i i don't know what it is but you know you get lot of wrong answers you are actually I, some really funny answers that are popping up and, on twitter and right now and they are basic and they're basic they're, they're basic. very basic and they have integrated into search yeah. uh, we, we were just speaking and they have, that is just not acceptable for a company like google hmm. so true so what what do you think sajid uh, i feel uh, google is on to something that um, that that we are missing but i'm still hopeful not their hardware department <laughs> uh, not the hardware department. no i was i was hoping a lot with this with io google io, uh, yeah. google IO and it was boring yeah it, it was boring yeah i mean they could have done a much really good job. job much better job which that, that's what i'm saying now that yeah i'm sure they will bounce back google's a big company yeah, they do yeah. fantastic things yeah, and yeah. you know they'll they'll come back but yeah i mean chat gpt 40 at the moment seems to be more interesting and exciting yeah, compared yeah. to google io that, uh, google ai that's for sure like i Germany. said i am more excited about what is going to come <laughs> the, the, and wow i mean chat gpt whatever five. happens scarlett johansson apparently doesn't have a footing <laughs> you know what happened there tell right? me how how is it going to change our world 
our life as creators do you think it is going to actually a lot of our content work that we are doing right now we are in uh, a lot of the content folks are actually integrating chat gpt into their workflows or basically uh, you know generative ai into their workflows for simple things like for example i have a thumbnail this is a thumbnail that's been made shrikan put that up on uh, you know chat gpt and said asked it to make it better like what mm. can it what mm. can be done better it gave like a bunch of suggestions which was so nice yeah yeah and then we changed that and i think next time we should try <laughs> and see yeah. if chat gpt can if we integrate chat gpt suggestions and if the thumbnail is better and we have better click mm. rate Okay. We'll one, one tool we don't talk about much is uh, perplexity. Perplexity, yeah. You've yeah. used perplexity. Yeah. Do you like it? It is. It is quite good, and it also gives a you know recent uh, information. So that's okay. very good. Yeah. So the data. I think a lot of how AI performs will you know boil down to how well they it's able to obviously scan through data and give you the right information in the database, which is funny because Google AI is not doing it well, and it's. you know trusting absolutely you know completely bogus sources yeah which is i don't know google yeah. fix this <laughs> yeah google fix this talking about google fixing things pixelate <laughs> you have very strong thoughts about it no yeah i have i have i mean you cannot launch uh, a phone that actually you know consumers will not pay more than 30 32 33 thousand rupees for 53 thousand rupees you know uh, right. th- that's my main i i look from consumers point of view i mean what 8a was offering was even a 25000 rupee phone uh, is offering right. so right. and being pixel they could ask for a premium of about 7 8000 rupees so 32 33 below 35000 is what i was expecting 8a i i knew it wouldn't happen but i never expected to go beyond 50 50 7a was also about 40000 rupees yeah 44. 44 so i was expecting yeah it will be around 40 mm. 40 42 43 but 53000 on what basis so you know somewhere they are getting the pricing wrong but apparently they're now uh, manufacturing in something in Dick- india dixon with dixon, dixon. with dixon yeah and and no i also wanted to add that earlier pixel cameras were there and right. all the ev- everyone else was here now that gap is all so that differentiation which was there earlier is it's not there anymore it's not there anymore absolutely that is the truth and there used to be this uh, you know a certain set of rabid uh, tech nerds would be like no no pixel camera is the best but you got to use the other cameras yeah, they yeah. they are improving and yeah, yeah. and that chasm or the difference between you know camera performance i think is reducing like you rightly said mm, yeah. by a huge margin yeah thoughts yeah. on this i'm sure you <laughs> strong thoughts again <laughs> okay i have a uh, idea for google that they should acquire nothing and fix their hardware department that's such a good idea actually. yeah yeah i mean we have spoken this multiple times and yeah if google can acquire nothing that would be really nice and I, i'll tell you what uh, nothing needs a lot of resources at this point of time they they have a good person in kalpe but that's not enough they need resources funding and if they can acquire and you know under google if they can build that, that that's that'll that will be, be ideal that, that yeah. will be fun that will be interesting it's a good point <laughs> you raised something interesting There's another rumor that's coming in mm. that the Pixel 10 mm. will come with Tensor G5, and that mm. will solve the problems that were there with the cur- that are there with the current Tensor chips, and that is the Samsung Fab. Apparently, it's going to be coming with TSMC. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. you know, this you are sounding like a Pixel fanboy because that <laughs> is, you know, uh, yeah, hope is good, but I am not sure given their track record. I, I'm not going to uh, bet too much on that at this point Truth of time. Truth be told, I'm just trying to be balanced. These <laughs> Pixel fans can be really rabid. I'm telling you. That. <laughs> Actually, fans of any brand can be really rapid. I think in in Pixel 10 launch event, Sundar Pichai will said, "Is it too late to say sorry now?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we should have had Arnav for this conversation. The oh the bona fide oh Pixel fan in our Pixel office. Pixel fan boys. He's yeah. still waiting. He's like, "It'll come. Hoga. 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 <laughs> well, okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Um, another phone brand that I feel again. I'll lead. into this conversation is on a magic series is coming to india mm. which has been confirmed when we don't know mm. how we don't know <laughs> we have no clue the problem i feel with that brand right now in our country is that like there's a lot of talk but no serious action or you know a lot of the stuff that they've launched may be good a little too late to the market uh, magic series is something that we're really looking forward to but how like you know how will it fit into the whole space like what are your thoughts like you rightly said i mean there is lot of talk and uh, being madhav shet at you know he is at the helm so you know he is going to always come on social media and talk about it right. he knows that uh, so he is doing it see for honor magic series um, my my problem with honor is only that 
again the pricing i i talk about this for every because you know every phone is good or bad but what really you know its price is what the most important thing is you know of 30000 rupees same phone and a 50000 rupees same phone if you are getting it so my problem is x9b was overpriced magic it will come it's a great phone uh, yeah. outside it is long it's a great phone but at what price will it come that is my problem with not only honor with any brand and with honor specifically i think they Again, they pricing. they they need to bring in more phones right now you know they launched x9b about 4 5 months back now another launch will be uh, you know 3 4 months later so that that's what i think yeah they're banking on too few products to make a mark i think they cannot they cannot it's tough at least not in indian market yeah yeah, yeah. i think uh, honor uh, did a mistake with honor 90 Uh, yeah, they they launched at something thirty five thirty six thousand, and in sale that phone was going around twenty thousand. Yeah, your brand value erodes immediately once you start dropping in price like this. Yeah. And, and you imagine someone who has bought a phone for thirty five thousand, and in two months it's the same phone you are getting for twenty thousand. How cheated will he feel? Yeah. So that 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 is another thing that brands need to understand. And I don't think there's a clear strategy for India because we are seeing. Phone launching from fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, and now uh, on the magic series, obviously go around a lot. Yeah, it's very important to build a portfolio, and that's yeah. OnePlus has done it very yeah. well till now. But OnePlus mm-hmm. is in a bit of a weird sort of uh, situation right now. But still, I think it's a brand that's existing. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, there'll yeah. be ups and downs. Yeah. But at least I know that their portfolio is damn nice now. Like you know, you know, there's a nice little you know okay. CE Lite under twenty. They have their CE series under twenty five. Yeah, they have the yeah. Nord around the thirty thirty. They so they've done it really they, well. They, and I'll tell you what, I was speaking to. Uh, one of the largest uh, retailers phone retailers right, right. Uh, in maharashtra and he told me an interesting thing which which you guys need to know and even the viewers should know he said you know people walk into my store asking 80% of them asking for two brands one plus and xiaomi one plus and xiaomi interesting that i was taken aback that they asked yes xiaomi and one plus but which is probably where xiaomi is still doing well in the market but out of those 80% about 90% we move towards oppo vivo because margins these guys don't give at all i mean are uh, to run a store for each phone you know there's 6% at least these guys give 3% 4% whatever very very low so they they cannot sell those phones and that's why in the south oneplus phones some retailers have uh, yeah there's a problem with selling. the ore yeah so so oppo vivo offer higher margin so and, and their promoters are there in the shop they, they i see the camera see this see this and then they convert these guys into oppo and vivo phones so yeah yeah it's a big chunk of the market as well yeah. I, I i sorry i wanted to ask both of you that uh, as we have seen the you know market growth with vivo being on the top then samsung then xiaomi do you think the rebranding or the flooding of the segment works for these brands uh i the think branding it does with the the a series exists the m series exists the f series exists in the same price segment oh rebranding i i was uh, 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 thinking about sub brands sub branding like, 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 like vivo and iku i think that, that's be- that's very well done even xiaomi and poco very, very well, well done. done very well done but yeah uh, rebranding i i am i'm just i don't know what's the benefit oh. of the of that thing i mean honestly <sighs> no. it feels like appeasement for the um, channels basically more than anything else yeah yeah offline and online yeah, offline uh, amazon flipkart basically if we break yeah, that yeah, down yeah. these are those are the two major uh, you know e-commerce right. platforms so so it's the, not from consumer perspective you're saying yeah it is basically brands appeasement towards e-commerce platforms so that they can have like exclusive that's the truth i mean we, okay. we can't deny that but okay. i mean the thing is that at least consumer has an option so that's good so can prefer to choose what he wants to choose so i don't think there's a problem there i think it just dilutes their sort of portfolio a little bit for but for a, a, for a big brand i don't think it matters much honestly for a big i mean for a massive brand like samsung or a xiaomi or a, mm, for mm. them it, i don't think it matters if they sort of break their portfolio into mm. different uh, products it doesn't okay. honestly okay um last two topics uh, wwdc Uh, is happening right uh, i am genuinely excited for ios 18 this year yeah. for the first time i am excited for an ios launch since i think last ios 16 was when they changed the design or 15 i can't remember 15 15 ha huh? ios 18 is going to bring a lot of new changes around um, and we're reading a lot of good things about it one <laughs> major change is such a tiny little thing and that i'm so stupidly excited for is the fact that <laughs> is the app icons will be will you will be able to move it anywhere in the grid <laughs> revolutionary, revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. yeah something that 
you could do with thank you a 2000 tail if it happens thank you apple <laughs> <laughs> 15 year old android yeah i mean that's yeah. what apple is but yeah. more importantly um, there are some very interesting other changes like for example ai based mm. on device stuff yeah so obviously again i think uh, apple has fallen uh, behind that ai race so yeah, ios 18 had to have something their um, share prices are also showing up uh, analysts talking about it and that's why probably this ipad launch also one of the reasons was also that that we also have some ai so i'm i yeah and i am really looking forward yeah. what are the what are ai features that they are going to bring or is it going to be something that was android bought last year and now they're talking about that there was an appeasement for from apple side for obviously they work for the shareholders but the point is that you know there was a lot of ai talk at the app there, yeah. there's an ai ai everywhere everywhere AI, without AI. like any like feature to show for it exactly which is going to change with ios is what is going hopefully to again and they have they have collaborated with chat gpt so the so i just read the news that they are integrating siri and chat gpt so oh. so finally siri will not be dumber that is nice but considering apple's walled garden they're okay with an open platform like that coming know. into the i really don't know we we'll but i've been using siri lately by the way guys and in fact i was using it last night and i found the response to be extremely fast and accurate earlier it wouldn't give me answers to certain questions like for example i asked uh, you know uh, which team won the final uh, ipl 2024 not csk <laughs> but <laughs> and kkr but the point is that uh, it gave me the actual answer instead of leading me to a website earlier mm-hmm. that wouldn't happen so i think there might be some good changes to look forward to especially most of the ai stuff is going to be happening on device apparently not mm-hmm. on the cloud and that's very important yeah. on device ai and that is where you know the, the mid range and flagship range uh, will come in and interestingly there's another thing although we're talking about although we are talking about mid range phones getting better value for money flagship prices are going But even beyond north yeah yeah i mean uh, talking about which there's another interesting thing that's happening arun some experts are suggesting that apple should come up with a budget slash mid range offering offering to get the market excited Do you think that is necessary? I don't think so. They'll lose their their brand value is far bigger. You, you know, they will lose a lot of things, lot other things. They might gain market share, but that uh, positioning in people's mind about Apple that will take a hit. And I don't think. But the that, iPhone SE will happen. I'm presuming at some point. Yeah, that that will happen. But that mid range budget, no, that's not. That's happening. not happening. Yeah. Okay. So WWDC, we have to wait and watch. And I, I'm I'm waiting for iOS 18. And I want to see what AI features Apple launch. That that's that's for me the most exciting. You guys, part. let us know what Apple features will happen. Uh, yeah. What iOS 18 features you would like to see? Yeah. Okay, uh, Arun. Finally, you had something to talk about nothing and Kalpe's uh, visions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when I was speaking to Kalpe when I was in London and I I had offline I was speaking to him and that time also he said that you know. we are going to go you know kind of one launch or two launches a year not more than that okay. but suddenly that seems to be changing i right. i don't know what is happening with uh, that because they came up with phone 2a which was budget offering just exactly like oneplus is doing or any other brand is doing and now they are coming up with cmf which apparently is a phone 2a rebrand so it's going to be exactly the same but again priced even lower or probably similar pricing So what other brands are doing and what he said when he launched nothing that no we are like one phone a year no they have also done the same thing and i think this is more focused uh, towards india because this is the strategy india needs if you launch one phone a year it's not going to Interesting. work so i think we've circled back to the whole point that one phone a year is not going to be enough for few for f- india for india yeah 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 so so he's shifting he understands that because phone 2 did not do any numbers they did not sell well uh, phone, phone 2 is sold well and phone 2 is sold well so they realize that that's yeah, what that's, that's what, what is important yeah. it sold so well that they are uh, launching new colors every two week <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that color was good the third uh, one which yeah, it's nice very color. nice black it's apparently not the community edition i think uh, so just like i said that they are launching too many colors for two way there's there's going to be another color that is coming in july oh oh okay what is that color <laughs> <laughs> do you work for nothing sir <laughs> i work <laughs> you work <laughs> <laughs> okay so nothing phone 3 what are you expecting it to be like like what okay fine just tell me three things that you want to see in the nothing phone 3 mm, n- just better, three better cameras man i mean cameras is a, because uh, you know cameras. they could have done that uh, because their os is good so cameras i need the adapter in the box 
at that price i mean that is that is very important i i think these are the two things i like the look i os is excellent updates are really really good so performance is also good performance is also decent so yeah camera and uh, adapter in the two box two things okay sajid three things okay so camera first thing then uh, in that segment there are very few phones that are providing you know ai features on device ai features i think nothing has that chat gpt integration with the ear now and yeah. they have perplexity some yeah. this thing also yeah. i think uh, they shouldn't go with 8 gen 3 or something like that they should yeah. stick to stick to 8 gen 3 just for the pricing sake and uh, 8 gen 3 performs really good i don't think you need to shell a lot of money for 8 gen 3 like performance so yeah I, you're completely right i want the camera performance to be really good and maybe add a telephoto mm-hmm. this time around hopefully uh, but yeah apart from that i think uh, most of the things you guys have covered yeah, so yeah. that's really nice so one thing i missed this time around though the quiz that we generally do okay uh, but next time next podcast definitely we'll do it but yeah, yeah so guys great having the conversation yeah, again yeah yeah and again i i love to have such conversations please do <laughs> keep it regular it's like arun is telling all camera that i sure what the fuck <laughs> I mean, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> no, every every week I think once I go and ask him, "Yeah, podcast? कब करना है यार? कब करना है podcast? That that's what I go and ask him, and we'll make we'll we'll fix that problem. But uh, monthly once at least, yeah. we'll try. If not, uh, by, you know, fortnightly. But thanks, guys. Thanks for thank you. Being, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay, stay safe. safe.